Good morning, everybody. So, it's Friday. Happy Friday. It's the weekend. It's a weekend of an Australian Formula One weekend, so I'm going to have a very tired weekend. Race starts at 4 a.m., and I will be getting up for it. But today is Wednesday. I spent the entire week doing lots of other things that are not really worth filming, so we need to make a video in two days. So, we're going to work on Taylor's E28. It's been a while since I've worked on this and mainly because just things going on. Uh, we've got some seals here. Now these are the seals that we've been waiting for from Taylor. They took ages. They're not nothing to do with Taylor, but it was where they came from. It took forever. We've got them now. So now the car's on the floor. I'm going to jet the car up and start getting to, you know, putting those on basically. So yeah, let's go. Now, if you've been keeping up with these videos on Taylor's BMW, you already know that this car is very, very rotten. So from that, we have to replace the outer sill because basically the entire bottom of the sill is full of rust and packing peanuts and potentially a mouse nest in this driver's side sill. And then on the back edge where the sill meets the floor pan edge, that floor pan edge is probably gonna need some repairs as well. So we're gonna need to fix that while we're in there. What I like to do first is obviously you can see I've cut all the way up to there. I don't really like going any further up than that just because, well, we don't need to. And this is a factory door line. So if we start cutting about that door line and messing about with it, it's just another thing to worry about. So if we just butt weld it up here, just, believe, just below this swage line, that way we don't mess up any of the door jams and it's all factory. I just try to make things a little easier for me that way. And obviously the metal up there is good anyway, so we don't really need to cut it out. What I like to do from here is get roughly where I'm gonna cut into metal. And then from there, I'll cut a big slit and take the bottom of the sill off and then cut a big slit down the bottom of the sill as well. And then we can see what's hiding behind there. You can quickly see that that was all full of filler. So we had no idea that was even there, that hole. So that's why clean it all up roughly where you want to cut. And you can see that there's a problem just underneath where we wanted to cut. So I'm going to cut a little bit higher, get as close to this edge as I possibly can all the way along. Yeah, that's an idea. I'm going to take this wing off too, I think. Because, uh, well, as you can see here, that edge is a bit crusty too. So we need to get in behind there. It's good reflection on this paint though, to be honest. I've actually stitched myself up here. Uh, where I've parked the E28, to take the wing off, there's two bolts underneath the bumper. And because it's up against here, I can't take the bumper off. So I'm just gonna prop the wing up a little bit. Just out of the way, so it's not in our way. Less than ideal. Look at all that. Unbelievable. <laughs> 
now what you can and can't see here is that the floor edge underneath is actually really good so what i've cut off here is literally just the drop down bit that came off of like this edge here so if I just need to, you know, weld an extension down to match the height of our like rear sill all the way down. This is good metal, I just got to clean it up. Uh, and then I should have to <laughs> repair this bit here. Look at this. This is gonna be a bit of a nightmare. This is the inner structure and the wiring loom goes through it. So yeah, this is gonna be fun, but majority of it, the floor edge, we can get away with. Well, absolutely just spent ages trying to clean all this up and I lied, this edge here is very pitted the whole way down. So I'm gonna have to cut that edge out as well. And um, yeah, we come over here, that hole has obviously got considerably bigger. Um, that is gonna be a bit of a pain to repair. Obviously the hole here is a lot bigger. The floor edge is very good. Let me get down here, I'm laying on the floor. The floor edge up to about here is very good. Uh, all the way down is like decent. It's just this edge here, it's no good. Fuck off, man, I'm talking. Why is my workshop next door a bunch of landscapers? How dare they clean their workshop while I'm trying to video? Yeah, like I was saying, this floor edge is absolutely perfect all the way down until you get to about here. And you can see there's a repair on there. So I'm gonna have to change the floor edge from here. I say change. Fabricate new floor edge from here all the way down to the front where the jacking point is. And obviously I'm gonna have to repair all of this edge the whole way around. There's a lot of contours and shapes and wire looms going through it. And that follows that round all the way up to this pillar here. Yeah, this is quite involved. This is this is exceptionally a lot of rust. I don't know if you can see that, but there's lots of little spot welds there. Now that's where the floor edge comes out and then meets to this panel, and this panel goes straight down. I'm gonna try and drill these out, but I'm probably gonna just cut them out and then create our new panel that comes down from here all the way to like here get that sorted and then I know how high to make our depth for this bit here because there's a lot of contours that I've got to make around this edge it's gonna be quite involved so yeah let's uh, let's get cracking start cutting this out
That's the first bit finished. Now to tackle this bit tomorrow. I just thought I'd go over again why I'm doing this in sections. Down here, near the front, there's a lot of different shapes, right? At the back here, it's all flat, so I can keep my reference points all the way up to the half of the, the midway point, basically, and then I can continue on like that. Because when I get involved in all that, I'm gonna be cutting out a lot of reference points that I'm using, so if I cut it all out, all the way along, it's a bit daunting. So if I do it in sections, it makes life a little easier. And number two, I don't have a bit of metal that's that long anyway, so it doesn't matter if and if I did. Right, after much cutting later, there is nothing left. Now, just here, I managed to get the, obviously the return lip of the floor all cleaned up so we can put a panel in, the same as what we did on that one, just there. Should have probably made that panel there a bit longer, but there we are. And then I had to clean up all of the floor edges on the inside where we need to weld. I think this is the main problem about you know, restoring a car is all of the surfaces where there's just like rubber underlay and everything all in between the seams and stuff. That is the main reason your world will go awful if you've got like under seal and stuff everywhere, like cavity wax, all that sort of stuff. That's what makes you have a bad time. So just clean it all out. It's a ball ache, but it will help you in the long run and your overall outcome will be a lot nicer because it hasn't got melted fluids and wax and stuff dropping into your weld as you're welding it because as soon as you weld it it might look clean as soon as you start welding it the panel gets hot everything just melts around it and it just ruins the weld so yeah that's what i'm doing and uh i have to get in here with the grinder and try not to destroy all the wiring that's another hurdle but uh we're getting around to it the throttle pedal has snapped off which is uh really helpful this car it's just rubbish. <laughs> Clean the old surrounding areas. And uh, this is where the throttle paddle goes. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more work there and then cut the section out here because as you can see, that edge is very pitted as well. At some point, I'll start putting some more metal back in, but at the minute, there doesn't seem to be anywhere to be found, so you'll have to bear with me. 100% this is the last rust repair job I ever do. Big one anyway. Never again. Thirty inches total. This is 23 inches. <sighs> I wish my folder was bigger, but this is what I've got to deal with, so yeah. More sections.
that's all in there tacked up. From here, I'm gonna probably, you know, rebuild the rest of it. Because that's tacked in underneath now, I can wait until it's on the ramp to fully weld that, but I can finish off this outer edge here. And then that way I can progress a little bit more, not have to weld upside down. Everyone's happy. I'm gonna make this panel in two pieces again. Just go here to here, that's a flat bit. And then from here, there's a little bit of a contour and that will follow around all the way up here. I'm gonna make these panels. Three, two, one. Got one for here, which I need to trim down. And we got this one, look at this. So it's got a bit of a bend to it on that top edge there. It goes up and around there. And then that goes a bit like that. Curvature goes up round. Really awkward piece to make. Got to drill some holes in it now. Paint all this in well with primer and we're on to a winner. Well, that went okay, I guess. Not bad, not terrible. Not the best work I've ever done, but you know, it's solid, it's one piece. We have a hole in a lip. We're fully weld to it now. I've just got to finish off this little triangle here and go all the way up there. And then this like uh, plane is finished because uh, the seal goes over this bit here. I'm not quite sure what shape it needs to be but it does go over that bit there. So I'm gonna make a little patch panel that goes in here and up to the top there. And then that will be it because, uh, well, I haven't really got much time to do anything else. It's like five o'clock right now. I've got to go home and edit this video. So yeah, happy with that. Obviously on the ramp, I will weld this in fully, the floor edge, but uh, yeah, looking good. I always, I always find that welding an inner sill, uh, whether it is solid, rusty or whatever, the inner sill up here is usually so thin, which is like one of the reasons why they don't, don't last. But I've found that they're just really easy to blow holes in, no matter what you do. Um, but yeah, just my little two cents there. Looks all right, not bad, not terrible. Something like that. Right, so I'm just letting the car cool itself down so it doesn't magically set itself on fire as soon as I leave the unit. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. The uh, inner sill, inner floor edge, a uh, little bit of that inner arch up there. That's all finished. Um, obviously the outer sill is now ready to go on. Obviously I've got to paint the inside of here uh, and then get the outer on at some point uh, in the next week or so. And yeah, pretty happy with how it's come out. I don't really like doing this sort of thing. Uh, laying on the floor, grinding, getting welded all in your face, getting burnt. It's not enjoyable. <laughs> It was a bit of a pain to film, I can't lie. It's hard to get everything on camera at good angles at that height. My little tripod there is only so big, so it doesn't go too low. 
Need better. Need a better tripod. These sorts of repairs literally take forever as well. Uh, that's like two days, two solid days on doing the E28. Um, the rust just never stopped and it was never ended. And uh, we got there in the end, but yeah. If you ever see rust, just run away, please. I know someone's got to do it, but like, <sighs> rusty cars are a headache. And I know that I have to do very similar repairs on my E24 very soon. Not stoked. But yeah, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I know a lot of you do enjoy this type of video. It's quite satisfying to watch. So there you go, there's another one. There's gonna be plenty more on this. I won't film everything. I might not film the other seal. Might do that off camera, but any other little repairs like we got on the inner arches and wherever else, I might just film those separately off camera because, well, you've already seen the one side. I'll obviously film the outside seal when it goes on, but I don't wanna film the same thing on the other side unless you really, 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 really want to see it, but I doubt it. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because we're trying to hit 20K very soon. My goal was to hit 20K at the end of the year and we're nearly at 18,000. So yeah, three months in, it's all gone very well and uh, super, super happy. So yeah, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. I'm going to get up at very early in the morning tomorrow morning to watch qualifying and then very, very, very early on the morning on Sunday. So Tuesday's video might not be as good because I'm going to be tired. Anyway, thank you. Goodbye. So you can love walkers. Expedia members save on travel.